Clarktail Historical Society Museum is pleased to present our October 2021 First Friday speaker, Drake Meineke, the founding director of the Arizona Copper Art Museum and the past president of Clarktail Historical Society and Museum. This presentation is on copper, the making of Clarkdale. And the location of the presentation is the Arizona Copper Museum in downtown Clarkdale. Thank you, Drake. Welcome everyone. My name is Drake Meinke. I'm here today to give you a presentation on the making of Clarkdale and copper. Almost always in this nation, the most incredible stories begin in the smallest of towns that are just unassuming. And one of those towns just happens to be Clarkdale, Arizona. Directly out the window of this building, seven blocks from here, is where an incredible story begins. It's the story of copper. Copper started in this town and spanned the world and every nation as it was exported away. Uh, Clarkdale was near Jerome. Jerome was a large source of copper minerals, and of course those were mined in the early 1900s until about 1950 in mass quantity, of course. Mr. Clark was our town founder here in Clarkdale in 1912. He pretty much owned the entire area. He owned most of Jerome and all of Clarkdale, including the smelter and train and other, other areas around here. Mr. Clark was commonly known as America's Copper King. He started Clarkdale, or founded it, in about 1912 and had the entire community built out to support a large industrial complex that was just seven blocks away. That complex employed thousands and produced billions of pounds of copper and tens of millions of ounces of silver and gold in the making of Clarkdale, Arizona. Now the question is, what happened to all the copper in Clarkdale, Arizona? Billions of pounds and not even one ounce left in this town to show for it. The copper was exported around the world through Los Angeles and Elizabethport, New Jersey, and used in the United States as well. We turned it into industrial product, construction products, but we're gonna showcase a different way of why people wanted copper like you guys and not industry. People like us wanted copper for artwork. In fact, almost every museum in this nation is filled with copper and different art pieces. Sort of like this museum here. And we showcase your different styles of art uh, that people made from the metal. So Clarkdale produced billions of pounds of copper. The copper ore actually came from Jerome, Arizona, about four miles away from here. Copper ore looks something like this blue rock that you see down here. And then, of course, you take the copper out of that through an industrial process and end up with the metal. Copper is another metal that forms into nuggets as well. So only copper and gold form a nugget on this planet. And if you notice this large nugget is green in color, that's because copper has a verdigris that forms upon it, sort of like the Statue of Liberty. But you can always polish copper and get these beautiful red metal look. And copper is considered the beautiful metal. On the element chart back in high school, you probably remember one of the few CU stands for copper. The seven metals of antiquity are these seven here. And you notice copper is in the number one spot. That's because copper was the first metal ever discovered by humankind. Gold followed very close thereafter. Seven metals, there are seven associations as well. Seven metals, seven days of the week, seven planets that you can see with your naked eye, seven mythical gods and goddesses, and the seven ancient wonders of the world. Well, you'll find out that copper associates to all sorts of different things. You've probably heard of a metal called bronze or brass. Both those metals are man-made metals and called alloys, and they consist of copper and another metal mixed together. Bronze is an ancient metal, back to the ancient Egyptians, and brass is fairly new, only about 1,000 years old. So here they all are, your first metals. Guess who discovered these first seven metals? 
You did. Welcome to the Affinities of Copper. Well, first, let's dive into the Copper State. Up here you can see, this is the shape of Arizona, and of course there's many little denotations on that to show where there's mines throughout the state. In fact, Arizona is the third largest producer of copper in the world, behind entire countries like Chile and Peru. And of course, our state flag in Arizona, that center star, is a star of copper and it represents the copper industry in the state of Arizona. We've been the lead producer in the United States for 112 years. Up here you'll notice a famous painting. You've probably seen this painting in many art books or may even have made the trek to Italy to see it in a museum over there. What's it doing in Clarkdale? It's all about the affinities of this painting and copper. In fact, Venus is all about copper, and you can dive into the story on this panel. Over here we have some famous symbols, and you probably recognize those immediately. Quite common in the world, but wait a minute. This symbol is a symbol for copper. That is a symbol for iron. This is a symbol for the planet Venus, the planet Mars. Mythical goddesses hand mirror over here. Mr. Mars' shield and spear, and of course, that's a symbol for copper, and that's the symbol for iron as well. You might know it as female or male. <laughs> Welcome to our very first art room. In here, this is our military art of how the soldiers turn brass shell casings into art forms, and they would send the art forms back home to their loved ones as flower vases, or even keep them as souvenirs and mementos. This is a form of art that was created during World War I. Today, the art form is known as trench art. But we have to dive into a very unique story. Remember, Clarkdale exported billions of pounds of copper? Well, some of that copper ended up in France and Great Britain in World War I. And the French took it and turned it into brass by adding a little bit of zinc to the copper. And of course, the French and the British made shell casings from the brass. And later on, those shell casings were discharged in combat and then picked up during the walls in battle, hammered on by soldiers of the trenches, and of course, turning them into those flower vases for loved ones back home. So, all the way around the world, from the little tiny town of Clarkdale, Arizona, all the way to France, and back home, now in Clarkdale, Arizona. Welcome to Copper as Embellishments. In the museum here, we're going to showcase a few art forms that you'll find on buildings and throughout households, inside and out, as well. Copper has been an embellishment for thousands of years and even takes place in items like clocks and so forth from history. Remember those copper embellishments from the hallway? Well, now we're in copper as art and architecture. One of the key pieces in the museum is this large dormer, and it came off of a house of a guy that you might recognize. His name was Mr. Andrew Carnegie's. That house was in downtown New York City. It still stands today as a museum, but they repurposed the roof. And we have one of the dormers off that house, right here in the small town of Clarkdale. Reason why? Copper starts in Clarkdale, went around the world, and now it's back home. Copper is art. Many homes in the world we decorated with copper, and here are some art pieces that you would have in your homes. These pieces in the museum come from Europe, and other places around the nation here in Northern America, Mexico, 
and just about everywhere. You notice all sorts of decorative things, vases and urns, two centerpieces, two lamps and whatnot. Copper was used in art for all sorts of things, including household items as well, such as this teapot. But also, for celebrations and ceremonies, these are face masks from southern Mexico where they would apply them and then conduct ceremonies such as like the very first day of harvest or to bring on the rainy season. The giant curiatids that you see, those would actually hold up a balcony, but they merely were decorative. The superstructure was underneath them to hold the balcony up. And you have some cresting up there, you notice that green cresting that there came out of a place in Philadelphia and it was from like a music hall. And the top, we showcase architecture once again, those are shingles and we use copper roofs. You've probably seen them on courthouses and fine hotels throughout history. Welcome to the kitchen room in the museum. One of the most interesting facts about copper is that in every kitchen in history until about the last 150 years, copper was the primary metal used. So you cooked on copper or you didn't cook. It's that simple. Here's a copper pan. You've probably seen them around all over the place. Sometimes they're made in France or Italy or sometimes right here in the United States of America. And of course we have some lovely copper food molds that you'll see. These are all Victorian era copper food molds. And you can see the lovely decorations that are on them as they like to make very fancy food in a Victorian era. These food molds in the case are primarily from Italy, England, France, and Germany. Copper was produced into just about everything in the kitchen. Tea kettles, pots, cookware. Sometimes they got to be huge. And copper from Clarkdale is where some of this ended up being. Unbelievable copper used in just about everything to include the making of vinyl records. You'll see three copper records here. These are master proofs and they would have stamped out those vinyl records that you listened to as a kid. The music is on metal first. Also, gongs to bells, you name it. Remember back in high school, musical instruments? Copper was a major player. In the center panel there, we have copper paintings. If you look closely at those paintings, you'll see that copper is in each and every painting, but sort of off to the side and not the focal point of the painting. But there it is in history. Copper was at your side from day one in all of history. And divers helmets, oh yeah. Props as well. And even on the bottom of ships, we've had copper. Uh, you'll probably recognize that model ship. That's the USS Constitution. It's the oldest ship in the United States Navy today that's still commissioned. And of course, it's in Boston Harbor. Look closely. It's nicknamed Old Ironsides, but you don't see any iron on its sides. Only copper. Maybe we should rename it Old Copper Sides. And of course, Mr. Clark, he was on a ship, or excuse me, Mr. Clark's nephew was on a ship called the Titanic. And if you've ever looked closely at the Titanic, the bottom is also has copper on it. Remember the kitchen? It was all about cooking. This room is the wine and beer room, and it's all about drinking. In fact, we have many things in this room. These actually were sinks, and you would wash your hands, do as you wish. Some of them are highly decorated and you'll see faces or other artwork 
including armorials that are placed on the copper. These pieces sat at the focal point of your home in history. Other folks, or other pieces, like this one here, is a beer tankard. And this was a very fancy beer tankard, very large. You're probably wondering why. Well, this was a server, and you would use it in like a tavern, and it would serve many people. Remember, in history, we didn't have refrigerators. You actually had to go down to the basement to get the beer, bring it up in a large server, and then serve from it. Copper from Clarkdale, not in this room. These pieces are way too old and much before that time Clarkdale was in production. Back in that drinking room again, we feature something interesting, glassware. What's important about glass and copper? Well, copper stains just about everything light blue in color. So glassware that's blue is made with copper. However, other metals can be used to color glass, like the dark green down here. That's actually made from iron to create that dark green glass. Remember the red rocks of Sedona? They're full of iron too. But iron stains glass green. And of course we have other colors, like these red pieces here. Those have gold in them. And of course gold stains glass red. And in a newer world, we have this color. You probably recognize it. That dark blue, commonly called cobalt blue. Well, there's an element on the element chart called cobalt. Mix cobalt with glass, you end up with that color. Welcome to the winery and distillery room. Yep, you probably guessed it. Copper's prominent all over the place in those areas. You'll see distills or stills, you will see items that were used in a vineyard, and it's just about everywhere. Thanks for uh, a few minutes of your time, and we wish to see you down the road at the Copper Museum. And also, remember, Clarkdale has many museums, so visit all of them. Thank you.